Hong Kong wasn't founded in the conventional sense, but that's not the first thing you need to know. Different peoples have lived in the area that is now Hong Kong for thousands of years. When discussing the founding of Hong Kong, however, most people usually mean the time when the British first established a presence there. Captain Charles Elliot is widely regarded as the man responsible for this. It was the Qing Dynasty of China, which ruled in the early 19th century, that was responsible for a large swath of the region, including modern-day Hong Kong. There was a time when the Qing government in China was closed off to foreign trade and influence despite the fact that the British were eager to establish commercial ties with the country. The First Opium War broke out in 1839 as a result of rising tensions between China and Britain. Because of a trade deficit, the British government decided to begin smuggling opium into China, which sparked the conflict. The Qing government, which viewed opium as a harmful and addictive drug, was greatly opposed to this. The British eventually triumphed and were able to negotiate several concessions from the Qing government. The handover of Hong Kong Island to the British Empire was one such concession. The superintendent of British trade in China at the time, Captain Charles Elliot, played a key role in negotiating the terms of the session. Elliot landed on Hong Kong Island on January 26, 1841, and officially claimed it for the British Crown. He named the island Hong Kong, which translates to Fragrant Harbor in Cantonese, and declared it a British colony. What happened after that is, well, history. That's the whole story. Despite Hong Kong's lengthy and convoluted past, Captain Charles Elliot is frequently cited as the man who founded the territory as a British colony. It's an exciting tale packed with drama, peril, and the unexpected. Charles Elliot, Captain. A man of many gifts and achievements. I hope to tell you something interesting and enlightening about his life and worked. I in 1801, Elliot was born to British parents in Dresden, Germany. Due to the fact that his father was a diplomat, Elliot had the opportunity to experience a privileged upbringing and travel the world. Before becoming a cadet for the British East India Company, he attended Oxford University, where he majored in classics and studied law. Early in his career, Elliot was stationed all over Asia, from India to China to Singapore. His intelligence, leadership abilities, and diplomatic skills helped him rise rapidly through the ranks. Elliot was thrust into the middle of a major geopolitical conflict in 1834 when he was appointed superintendent of British trade in China. There was a time when the Qing government in China was closed off to foreign trade and influence despite the fact that the British were eager to establish commercial ties with the country. During Elliot's time as superintendent, the relationship between the British and Chinese governments became increasingly strained due to a number of contentious negotiations and confrontations. But his greatest accomplishment came in 1841, when he successfully negotiated Hong Kong Island cession to the British Empire. On January 26, 1841, Elliot arrived on Hong Kong Island and formally claimed the territory for the British Crown. In recognition of his work negotiating Hong Kong's session, Elliot was named the colony's first governor. During his four years as leader, Hong Kong grew into a global financial and trading center. The governorship of Elliot was not, however, without its share of controversy. A dispute with the Chinese over the opium trade and a rebellion by the local population were just two of the crises he faced that drew criticism. He left his position in 1845 and went back to England, where he spent the rest of his life out of the public eye. Captain Charles Elliot is remembered today as a skilled diplomat and a pivotal figure in the history of British colonialism in Asia, despite his somewhat mixed legacy as governor of Hong Kong. The negotiation of the Hong Kong session he led was a watershed moment in the history of the region, and his role in shaping the colony's future is immeasurable.